Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins to God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips. And shall your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, today that you would hearken to his voice. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Paddan Aram, sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder 
shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so, she named, so they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore him. When the boy grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Esau said, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let us please say together Canticle 9, and we will omit the refrain at the end. Surely, who saves me? I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord is my stronghold, my sure defense. He will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that you remember the name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the Great One is in the midst of you, is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Falls away. 
As for what was sown on, among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lore of wealth choke the word. <coughs> Excuse me. And it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, and another sixty, and another thirty. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning. morning. Today we have the parable of the seeds and the soil. I'd like to draw first a distinction between words like soil and dirt. We see Jesus using the word dirt when he tells the disciples to go out into the world, be as uh, be like be as wise as, you know, be, be as careful as doves. But, but the point is, is that he sends him, them out, and if, if they are not accepted, they are to shake the dirt off of their shoes and to move along. Here we have Jesus talking about a sower who is sowing into soil. Two different words, two completely different meanings. The dirt is the dusty stuff that clings to us from the, the world. But the soil is the stuff that we grow things in. Soil is defined as, 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 as a group of nutrients and vitamins and things necessary to grow other things. The soil oftentimes becomes depleted, and that's why you see farmers rotating their crops, because that, the soil has to be replenished on a, on a yearly basis or on a regular basis. So Jesus is talking about uh, soil and sower of seeds. And he's using a parable to discuss this. And a parable, and as we see in the next few weeks when, when we get into these parables, what, a, what Jesus uses a parable to do is to say, this is what the kingdom of God looks like. Can you see the kingdom of God in this story? And that's why the parables are varied. He'll tell an agricultural parable to a group of farmers. He'll tell a merchant parable about losing a pearl. He'll tell something that that, that people can relate to. But the overarching meaning of these parables is that, is, is this is what the kingdom of God looks like. Can you see the kingdom of God in this story? So how do we see the kingdom of God in this story? Well, God is the sower. He's got a giant bag full of seeds, and he's just throwing them out. That's God's love. That's God's grace. That's God's blessing. It's it's being shared with the world. It's being shared with the universe. Just handfuls of seeds going everywhere. Now, we are the soil. And so some of those seeds that God sows, and they sow them to everyone, some of them falls on the path. There is no soil on the path. There's only dirt on the path. The paths that we trod, there's only dirt on those paths. So the birds come and eat those. And Jesus says that represents um, those of us who, who hear the word of God but don't understand it. And if we look through history, we can, we can see that, that humankind has taken this word of God and used it uh, against other people, have, have used it against uh, the commandments of loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. The Bible was used to justify slavery. The Bible, the Holy Scriptures, the, the, the Scriptures that say love God and love your neighbor as yourself was used very effectively for slavery. the words that fall, the seeds that fall on the dusty path that have no meaning because we don't understand them. Those are the ones consumed by the evil one. Other seeds, they fall on thorny places. They they fall into weeds, and so as they grow, the weeds choke it out. Jesus says, that's for people that, that hear the word, but don't really act upon it. 
They don't, they don't take it to their heart. They're, they're, they're so consumed by the world and worldly goods and the things of the world, and they're so busy that they can't, they, they can't grasp what Jesus is telling us. And Jesus is telling us again that God is the sower and God is just chunking seeds at us. There's so many seeds, it's, it's, there's, 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 it's an unending, an unending sowing of seeds. All we have to do is be the soil that hears that. And that's the, the, the soil, the, 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 the seed that is cast on fertile soil. It roots, and the soil allows the roots to grow and be strong. And then it allows the plant to grow. And it allows the fruit, or the vegetable, the fruit of the plant, to blossom. That's the word, that, that, that's the seed that God sows to each and every one of us. And as we hear it, because our souls, our bodies, our minds, our soil, because that's what we are. We are soil. We are earth. In our funeral, our funeral liturgy, we say, you are, you are to dust, and to dust you shall return. You are earth. You are soil. And so God's sowing that seed into us, into our hearts, into our souls. Our good soil will take that seed and nurture it and so that it grows and blossoms into the, the plant that God wants us to be, into the person that Jesus and God wants us to be. And those those, those, those seeds were sown out of God's love for us. And our returning our love to God is part of that soil. Soil, culture, all of these words come from the, 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 the Latin word cultus. And that means to adore. And so it is, it is in our adoration of God, it is in our adoration, it is in our adoration of the scriptures and what they truly mean. And all the scriptures are explained by Jesus. They're all explained. They're all explained in one of two ways. Either loving God or loving your neighbor. There's no room for hatred in Jesus' universe. There's no room for hatred in God's universe. Love God. Love your neighbor. Those are the two commandments. That is the soil that we grow good crops in. That is the soil that the seed that God has abundantly sown to each and every one of us takes root and grows. Loving God, loving your neighbor as yourself. I say it almost every time. There's an old story about a preacher who said, you know, he got to the place and, and he gave the sermon and he walked out and they said, oh, that's a great sermon. Next week he gave the same sermon. Oh, that's a great sermon. Next week he gave the same sermon. They start to get suspicious. Oh, that's a great sermon, but I think we heard that one before. The next week, he gave the same sermon. They said, why do you keep giving the same sermon? He said, well, when you learn to do this one, of loving God and loving your neighbors yourself, then we'll move on to other ones. But until we, until we learn, I think, and that is my, my, my driving force in the, in the world and in the universe, is to, is, to, is to get myself and others around me to love God more fully and to love their neighbor as their self more fully. And in doing that, then we can do what it says in the dismissal. And that's the other thing that I preach all the time. And that is to go forth into the world, taking the love that we have in our hearts that God has sown into our hearts that has grown inside of us, taking that word and taking it out into the community and telling the community, telling everyone, not beating them over the head or proselytizing, but just telling them, God loves you. And if God loves you, then you should love your neighbor. If God loves you, then you should love him or her. That's the fruit that God has sown within us. Out of that seed that Jesus has sown that falls on the good soil, that's the fruition of it. Our love of God, our love of neighbor, and our going out into the world proclaiming that love to our neighbors and to one another. Amen.
Let us stand and <clears throat> proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in the Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. <coughs> 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 On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and glory. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses. And forgive those who trespass against us, and us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. And as the kingdom, power, and glory, and ever. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Head us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Your response to we pray is hear us, Lord. For the church, that like the seed is sown on good soil, are the ones who hear the word and understand it, who indeed bear fruit sharing the gospel as a true sign of hope, comfort, and love to all, we pray. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Us, Lord. For those in public trust and authority, that leaders of communities and nations of the world understand the word and apply it daily to make just and right decisions that promote freedom, equity, and equality for all, we pray. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. For the world, that individuals, communities, and nations take a real part in caring for God's creation, we pray. Hear us, Lord. For these uncertain times, let the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen all of us, kindling within us a flame of selfless, unwavering care, so that those who wish their voices heard for just cause may find ears to listen and together be a catalyst for positive change and ways through love and service to find calm and peaceful resolution, we pray. Yes, Lord. Lord. For all affected by this pandemic, that God will provide for the strength, health, and safety of health care workers, essential personnel, first responders, and volunteers, we pray. Yes, Lord. Lord. For this congregation, that God's continued blessings pour upon us, and that God looks graciously on St. Anselm, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for God's people and equip us for our ministries, we pray. Hear us, Lord. For the sick, that Richard Dredak, Joe Colleen, Jim Carter, and all suffering from coronavirus or other illnesses be on paths to a healthy recovery, we pray. Hear us, Lord. For the departed, that those going before us rest in the arms of our loving Lord, we pray. Hear us, Lord. We pray also for those who have birthdays and anniversaries today. Penny, Jeremiah, Robert, Ross, Michael, 
Sean, Andrew, Catherine, Barbara, Rebecca, Christine, and those who are having anniversaries, the Gallows, the McKays, and the Collins. O oh God, who has so consecrated the state of matrimony that in it is represented the spiritual marriage and unity betwixt Christ and his church. Look mercifully upon these thy servants that they may love, honor, and cherish each other, and so live in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven for the blessing and of peace. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them on their way, wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of our lives. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer to you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit the honor and glory on all ages Amen Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you in all the places that you will go. Go then. Go where there is ignorance. Go where there is need. Go where there is danger. Go where there is pain. Go where there is narrowness. Go where there is fear. Go in courage. Go in doubt. Go in the strength of knowing and in the strength of not knowing. Go in strength and in the strength of weakness. Go in the joy which overcomes sorrow, and in the love which casts out fear. Go, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen.
Yes, sir. Are you altar guild? Yes. We're having a baptism next week at noon. See if I can, because I'm having a personal birthday. Oh, okay. So I don't know how I'll make it. No, no, no. If you could just pass it along to somebody. Okay. Um, I'll call somebody in my group or somebody. When is your procedure? Thursday morning. But if it, they find a, a vein that needs a stent or something, they'll uh -huh. have to stay. Okay. Hi, Laura. Be in our prayers. And if you're in the hospital for more than, if you're still there with Friday, would you give me a call? Would you give the office a call? I will. Thank and I will come see you.